Well, um, uh, I'm Jane Alexander, the CIO of the Museum of Art, and um, this is going to be the first time I do a gallery one presentation without showing our famous video. So this is for people who have already seen the video. Um, so uh, Gallery One um, is uh, part of our building project that just was completed. It was a $350 million renovation, and part of that was to create a, a place where art, design, technology would be in one space, and that it would be a place for visitors to engage with art in new and different ways. And so the big question has been, is Gallery One working? Um, so just to give you, um, during that, the couple of years that the building was going through this project, there was a lot of evaluation being done. And we found out that a lot of our visitors um, thought art museums were boring and dusty. And they thought, you know, even if they had a PhD in physics, if they didn't study before they came, what were they going to really do? So people have been like, is attendance increased? And yes, 39% this year. But we also opened up with this brand new fabulous atrium and a new restaurant and a new store. And since we're a free museum, it's hard to say that, well, 37% of that is because of Gallery One. Um, um, except maybe I'll say that, no. But no, it's really, it's really um, been because of that. But we also have 25% increase in family um, visitorship. So that's been huge in just one year of opening. Um, so Gallery One is located when you first come in. And when we put together the goals of Gallery One, um, even though the project sort of was restarted in um, the middle of 2010, we really kept the same um, goals that had begun in 2005. So through this, we really want to have our, there was a big thing about the visitors having fun. And one example is our museum, um, our Cuyahoga County Public Library had a brand new opening branch and they have a tech wall. And they are on the west side of Cleveland. And anyone knows Cleveland, if you're from the west side and from the east side, you do not speak to each other. But if you come from New York like I did, you're sort of going all over, you know, and it's really, you know, a whole six mile radius. So we, this library said, wouldn't it be great if we got people to the art museum, which is on the east side? So they have taken one of our lenses, our 1930s, which has line and shape, and um, also our art lens to engage visitors to come to the museum. We also have this huge party every year, it's called our Solstice Party, and last year was the first time the museum, the atrium, everything was complete, and we um, took our collection wall and at eight times the size, put it on the 1916 building, and there was over 5,000 uh, people from all over Northeast Ohio that come to this, and there's music and shows, but they got to engage with our collection like they never had before, and these were people that didn't even know Gallery One existed inside. The other big thing about Gallery One was it was the first um, test bed of our digital strategy. So one of the reasons we sort of changed gears in the uh, middle of 2010 was because we wanted to make sure that every single thing in um, the, on the wall, in the uh, art lens, pulled from our back end systems. We didn't know what the hardware was gonna be. We didn't even know what the space was gonna be, but we knew it was gonna change. And so if we put the work into the back end, whatever device is new and latest, we'll be able to support. So in our, um, our uh, art lens, our online collection and our wall, we actually have created CMS that pulls from our digital asset management system. And the digital asset management system pulls all the metadata from our collection cataloging management system. Meaning, if something is accession, deaccession, goes on view, goes on loan, goes to conservation, it's reflected on the wall. It's reflected in your art lens dynamically. So, with that in place and Gallery One opening last year, people have been like, oh, it's probably been a pretty relaxed year. And no, we revved it up because <laughs> you have that, you're maintaining that, we're doing um, new devices, but we also looked at the strategy. And this is our simple little, all our databases in, at Cleveland Museum of Art. And our goal is for everything to talk to everything in some way. That we um, set up a system, and anytime we look at a new system, or renovating, or modernizing an old system, we look at no one-offs. There is no project that someone comes up with that has no correlation to anything else, no 
just unless it's going to bring in a million dollars to the museum, we're not going to consider those. We're going to look at it from the back end, from the hardware, from the sustainability, from the scalability, and from the infrastructure of the application systems to support it. So um, we also have the application team was super busy this year. They had, we had a couple of projects we were doing, and one of the things is the wall. When an object's on the wall, you touch it, it shows you what uh, collections involved it, but it also, you can switch to its medium, to its time, and to its gallery. And except for the gallery, everything else had to sort of be rolled up, or else we could have departments that had, you know, 150 words on the wall. So we set this up, but we didn't have a way to automatically pull in new objects that had dates that didn't exist before or new mediums and things like that. So we made we figured out a way, we worked with um, Piction to make this dynamic. We also did, this is the, I, our team is so proud, they want, they will go against any museum in the country. We think we have the cleanest data now because our data is projected every day all over the place. So when we see ink on silk, Everyone think we, someone takes the picture in the, um, the tech in the gallery one, puts in a picture, sends it to application, and then they immediately get to see, is this some weird back-end thing from what system we changed, or is this a, was this a data problem, or um, is this an application thing? Um, we also did a lot of upgrades to fiction and flatten the data, and we actually have a talk on our digital strategy on Saturday, which we'll talk more about that. And our, this is our holy grail, like we always, it's like, oh, the central table. Because we have um, Patrons Edge, we have for our ticketing, we have a different system for our store, we have a different system for our um, restaurant, we have a different store for our donors, and there's no system, as we all know, that does everything, and there's no system that does great even those one thing. So what we decided to do was create a central table that um, we could pull information from all those different databases so that we can begin to get a complete picture on our visitors. So we are in the middle of that process, project, and that's been um, pretty exciting for the business side of the museum. The other big thing we did that was painful to our head of our CTO was upgrading our wayfinding. Um, every, for this project to work, for our lens to work, every single gallery has um, not only Wi-Fi, but wayfinding. And um, when we started the project, we thought we would just add a couple of AP, and I'm sorry, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Thinking about that year of that project. And, um, <laughs> and um, we, we, when we started the project, we realized we couldn't do that because we were, we were opening up galleries. And when we looked at how they had been placed, there was no triangulation. It was put in a straight line. And the head of design said, no, you're not cutting a new hole in our brand new gallery. You come up with a new idea. So um, we did an assessment of the entire um, building, and we ended up going with this initially um, hosted solution, which we have now brought in-house, another thing we completed this year. And uh, as you can see, it fit in the life track, and it was really easy to accommodate right away. But it is an operating cost that we wanted to get rid of quickly. And so um, we also had, um, with the new upgrades, the new IOSs, it was constant and with an old building and a new building, and galleries that have um, walls that don't go to the ceiling. It was constant um, figuring out things. We've set up a network just for art lens alone. We've set up a network um, just for iPads alone. We took that, we put it back together. We've done everything. And actually, if you've not been there in the last four months, you're gonna come, come test it out because we're pretty proud. Although there's still no perfect um, answer there. So um, the last thing we've been also working on our new galleries or Asian galleries was looking at all the places that we had to add new access points because none of them have walls that go to the ceiling. So everyone says, but what about the eye beacon? Why don't you just do that? So this is, um, we told our, del um, actually our CTO said, yeah, let's do that because I don't want to do this anymore. And so we called our developer and said, let's do eye beacon. And um, we didn't really do that. but. What we what we've discovered is it's not going to give the accuracy that we currently have. It's not really there yet, and um, and we also the way our application work it wouldn't take advantage of it. But people do have an expectation of um, sort of GPS quality, and that's not really what's there with wayfinding right now. We do think though that iBeacon would be great to replace our RFID. So currently. I don't have my phone. But any device, we give you an RFID, it's a sticker, and then every time you come to Gallery One, you can save objects, and it recognizes your device, and it, you can create your own tour, and thus you go into the galleries. And this would be a way to get rid of 
that actual RFID piece. And um, it also works with Android, which comes out in the next couple of weeks, so we might be looking at that. I'm going to, we've done a lot of preventive maintenance, this tech team put in place. One of the things that we had to come up with a better way of doing things was how to assess a problem. Because we have <laughs> applications going that talk to each other. We have devices with new operating systems. We have hardware that's new, doing different things that's never done before. And we have back-end systems in-house that we're upgrading this year. And when something went wrong, it was like a mess of emails from every department saying, it's not us, and then going in a circle. And so we came up with a method of how you assess a problem. So that there wasn't this, it's, and that, and that actually we're pretty proud of that. And that, that could be a presentation in itself. So we also learned operating the space. We had originally had a person dedicated to Gallery One on the tech side. We also have people from education, in um, mostly in studio play, but in the main galleries that are volunteers. And now there's a, um, a hired person that will be dedicated to the family space. But the tech people have a lot to do. They have to um, make sure the systems are working every day. They have to change something out. Our whole rule is nothing can really ever be down. We have screens up that if they touch the wall, the touching we're testing, it still looks like you can still look at the prettiness of the wall. We um, have them helping visitors who've never used technology to visitors who use it all the time. It's been a space where we have lots of visitors just ask questions about the process. And so we realized this is a burnout position. So what we did is we took people from help desk, people from AV, and even one person from visitor service is super tech savvy. And we have a rotation here, and this is the team, and they're after, they have really worked together well, and they actually look forward to their days in Gallery One, and they look forward to their days out of Gallery One. But it sort of <laughs> makes it a nice, um, and it's sort of the first time that, the, that really the help desk is in the front, front of the house. Um, and this is our, um, actually, sorry. That's our developer and our project manager learning how to use Gallery One. And that's um, using our central table. They're scanning it and going right to who's scanning our work. We also, um, content development, um, that the whole process of how we, should we do it all in big bulk? Can we do it at, at different segment times? We've sort of set up back-end systems and we're working with interpretation. And they're even working with how they, um, how they produce content and um, after looking at some of the analytics, I think a couple of things will change in the future, and that's a presentation in itself. The other thing, one big thing, is that all interactive, all installations don't work in interactive spaces. This was our um, famous um, uh, Richard Long, and it's right near that little lens over there. That's the sculpture lens where people are making, you know, posing and jumping around and 10 feet away from the lens. And people were walking into it and falling into it. And so I said, well, before we have a death, you know, we all discussed what, but, but the problem was, what can we do? So we actually had this great acquisition that came in and we replaced it with um, the Wilson's um, chandelier. And it's been a big success. And actually, people really enjoy it. Although people do miss the Richard Long will find a new home in the museum. There's one other thing that. Also, is you sign off, as you know, we're working with your vendor. They're, they are, they can't wait for that day you sign off. You can't do anything out of scope. And we sign off, and six months later, you might find a problem. And it might not be a bug, it might not be hard, it'll be something that you can't see until time has been used by people's interaction. And this is an example of someone would touch, when you touch the screen, you get Dutch paintings. And then you have 12 different objects from our Dutch painting. And if you switch to a medium, then you would have you know, paintings, and then so on, and 19, you know, 1865. And, and so as I would take tour, I would come down, people would visit, and the more I saw the wall, it seemed that the contemporary artwork was always Chuck Close first. And then it always had, you know, the second work was we always noticed. And I thought, well, those are the most favorited objects in the museum, maybe that's why it's coming up. But then I started to notice that our armor, like the same sword was coming up. Well, I, have to say, I mean, how can we, in our armor collection, how can everybody be favoring the same sword? And so we called local projects and we said, there's a problem with the wall. And they said, no, it's perfect. It's not our fault. <laughs> and so we did say that. <laughs> and so I, we, we kind of forgot about it because a lot of things were going on. And every time I got to the wall, it got more and more alike. And so the average visitor didn't notice it because we do have, you know, 18 different departments and many different mediums. but. It started to come on, and the application team, we all went down, we looked at it one day, and we realized, we know, aha, it's not randomly picking 12 objects. 
It's putting a relevancy. And so if something had been favored it, it's pulling that into it first. So by pulling that into it first, more people are gonna favor that object. And guess what? The same objects are gonna be on the wall all the time. So we explain that to local projects and we all came up with a happy solution and thus it works perfectly again. We fixed it. Yay. Um, so there's everyone, this is the other big question, everyone wants to know about our research. And we're doing an in-house research and it's not going to be actually done until summer 2014. But they, Elizabeth Bolander, who's leading this, is presenting at AAM. So if you're going to be there, she's going to talk about more in depth. But um, this is sort of um, our objectives. And um, we have had people, it was from July, uh, I think through August that we um, had observations, but we also been looking at the Google Analytics. And I worked a lot with looking at the Google Analytics and talking at local projects to look at the Google Analytics and sort of seeing certain things as we were making changes to the interactives too. So um, I am just going to, these are all these initial findings are in the paper and um, and we looked at just, it's really about the lenses we looked at, but one of the things when we came to it we um, realized that um, the games that had a lot of interaction, um, people um, thought it was really cool, but they didn't look at the objects as much. And then the lenses like globalism, people looked at all the objects, because the games were about looking at the objects. Um, it didn't mean that people liked them less or more, but we did see that the way you made the game is how they looked at it. And there's a lot to go here, and I will post this presentation so you can look at it closer. But one thing that we did notice, and this is something we're saying hum to, the lens sort of are about looking through and seeing the art in front of them. And we did have a lot of people, not all, but a lot, enough, that would say, this is a really cool object. Where is it in the museum? And it's like, right there. So <laughs> that makes us think, OK, we have to look at this. So I'm just going to quickly turn this over to Keely, who's going to talk about our um, phone and the analytics there. And um, thank you so much. Um, so well, I'll just be super, super quick uh, to take questions, because I'm sure you might have some after this. But what we did at Local Projects with CMA is embark on a second phase to incorporate iPhone and Android after doing the iPad application. So how did we start this process? Well, we decided we wanted to look at some of the analytics that came out of the iPad application first. And knowing that we had a very tight schedule and a limited budget, what changes could we make to accommodate some of the data that came out of that? So our initial findings were people were having, um, were being really drawn towards the object pages and the scanning. So try to privilege functionality that people were using the most. But it had to look the same, and it had to feel the same. OK, so mostly make sure you have analytics in there when you open it and when you launch, because we didn't in the first couple weeks. And so we missed out on some very important data. But you have to look at, are analytics or user observations more important? Uh, we assumed that the users that would be engaged with this would be on-site users. And we were right. Very, very, very right. Uh, and so the average time that people spend on site is about like almost 20 minutes versus off site, two minutes and 30 seconds. A lot of people scan. That's one of the most used functionalities within the entire application, and no one uses social media. Uh -huh. No, nope, at all. <laughs> this is total, total times. Facebook has been used as 615. Total. So. Well, one of the apps the iPad. Okay. <laughs> so there are some ways to, to accommodate that, but at the same time, it's only 615 people at all. And what's the total sample size? Um, we had, in terms of 14,000, 14, so they can share an object uh, through an embedded share. So it has to go through the application to track it. So people could be even taking screen caps or photos of the artwork and then sharing it independently, but we can't, we couldn't track well, it that actually way. Actually, one thing, 9,500 people have shared from the sculpture game. The game, that, right? Yeah. <coughs> well, tons of people are sharing from the interactive game. Mm. Okay. <laughs> people are sharing that way. Um, but the one thing to note is that with iOS 7, you've got embedded functionality for share. So what we're going to do, look, or what we're looking at now is 
does that help with social media? Just having it embedded in the iOS functionality. And it, it might help, but at the end of the day, there is other modes that spend your money elsewhere. You know, focus on other ways of getting people engaged and sharing, because they're just going to take pictures and share them on their own. But pre placing a premium on design and real estate for embedding social media, it, it just it wasn't worth it in the end. Also, biggest question is how do you keep up with this constant versioning and new device releases? Uh, the advice is don't customize so much because you will create bugs that are harder to fix and take longer to fix. So if you, not to say that you shouldn't customize design to a degree that your brand isn't represented, but try not to make exceptions to the rule uh, constantly. So the only, what we're finding is as new, as new devices are coming out and new versions are released, the custom components of the Artlens application are, are coming up with errors and bugs, almost consistently the same ones every single time. So if, there is, if your developer tells you, uh, I, can, I can custom code that, but that's not, it'll be harder to do, maybe rethink that functionality and how important it is because you might have to fix it yet again and again and again um, over the next year and a half. And then I guess you want to talk about this, or should we just do questions? Yeah, more. Gallery 1234 is scheduled for uh, <clears throat> summer of 215 to coincide with our centennial. And these are some of the things we're thinking about. So new stuff. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah. How much money did this cost? Because this is this is a, this is a seriously expensive project, isn't it? That's a genuine question. <laughs> so um, we were um, we were given a gift of ten million dollars for the project, but uh, that but it's the interactives and the hardware and uh, were nowhere near that cost. But it was for the whole. There was a building project in the space and other things that go through the building project. Um, but. Uh, I don't know if we share exactly. I, this is what I always say. I can give you the number, but it's not going to. No, it's so it's so big. You've given no, no. Well, I, no. I, I can say that we spent an AV integration a million dollars, but you guys are not going to be able to do all those interactives and do everything we did for a million dollars. We had a, um, a set a design to build contract, and it was just one of those projects that the vendors got sucked in and were excited about it. And actually, we didn't have any change orders, and they just moved with it, and they just kind of knew something was there. So you know, I give that number. People are like, how much does it cost to make the wall? The, wall, the back end of the wall was in turn. There's a huge part of the wall that is all in the house back end. So there's no way to give a real number. It's just not, it won't give you any information. But um, on, the, on the technology integration content side, about $3 million for 10 rank drafters and an iPad. And yet now you have a huge burden of keeping it all going. Yeah, that's that's the painful hit, and we and this is the in December our two year um, warranty is up with our hardware, and we have to and they realize uh oh we have to charge a lot more because it it was a lot harder to do what we thought. So very quick, just like two questions, just lady at the end there. Uh, how much user testing did you do as you were developing these tools, and um, and then also I wanted to know if you had an outside contractor to the analytics. Did everyone hear that? How much user testing did so, they do and did they have an outside there was, um, project? There was paper prototyping before we really got into what we were building in, a, in the previous group. Um, but from 2010 on, we did prototyping. But we were on two years from new concept, January 2011, to 12-12-12 was the, open, the soft opening. And so it was It was really more for test. It wasn't really saying, do visitors really like it and stuff? It was more just to see, how does that work? Are people get realizing that? Is the button in the wrong place? Is, does it work with the back end? And, um, and also because people didn't know what we were building, to get in, so people could see what we were doing and get more involved in where, the, where, where it was going. It was limited. And there was limited, limited user testing for the mobile application because the schedule was so tight. It was, let's make sure this works, um, and then we can from there, and it was yes, and it was, but, it, but the good thing about going too fast is we didn't have so many people then looking at it all. Like we had to really go with intuition and just keep moving, and that was sort of a blessing. And so, and we also had the next year with the iPhone to look at it better. And the last thing we are doing it internally, 
we're doing an evaluation today, but I am actually going to suggest that I also think we should, with a project this big and sort of being a test bed of so many things, it would be nice to sort of get an outside view of doing it, because everybody in this project brings biases and, and their own stuff to it and, and heartache. So, another quick question? <laughs> no? Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're just going to change our